This is the day that you, O Lord, have made. Surely we will rejoice and surely we will be glad in it. Nagpapasalamat po kami sa biyaya ng bagong araw, bagong kalakasan, bagong biyaya at bagong kapahayagan mula sa inyo. Nagpupuri kami at patuloy na itatanghal ang inyong pangalan sa aming kalagitnaan. Maging mabangong sa nawa ang lahat ng handog na awit, sayaw, panalangin at iba pang mga kaloob namin sa inyo. Salamat po sa buhay ng aming pastor at lahat ng aming mga kamanggagawa na patuloy na ginagamit ang kanilang spiritual giftedness para sa ikatitibay ng kapatiran. All for your glory, our Lord. They are blessings that you have given to us. Patuloy na maging channel of your encouragement, empowerment, and enlightenment sa lahat ang kabuuan ng aming worship service sa araw na ito. As the Spirit of Jesus guide and lead us to grow from glory to glory unto the image of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Psalm 113 verse 2 to 3 says, Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. The name of the Lord is a strong.
Dios, oh Dios Lagi kang pasasalambatan Sa lahat ng inyong kabutihan Puli kita, sasayawan kita Sa presensya nyo, ako'y magsasaya Sa puso ko'y wala nang iba Oh Dios, oh Dios Pagkat lagi kong naranasan Ang pag-ibig nyo hindi kaya Tumbasan ng kahit na Sino pang ba? Wala nang ang hihigit pa sa inyo Pagmamahal o mapagkat Kayo ang Diyos na dapat kailang pangmang Lagi ka pasasalamatan Sa lahat ng iyong kabutihan Pupulihin kita, sasayawan kita Sa presensya niyo Ako'y magsasaya Sa puso ko'y wala nang ang iba O Diyos, O Diyos Pagkat lagi kong naranasan Ang pag-ibig nyo hindi kaya Tumbasan ang kahit na Sino pa man Wala nang ang hihigit pa sa'yo 
blessed Redeemer, bright morning star. Oh, the heavens shout your praise. All creation bows to worship. Yo 
Mark 11, 24, New International Version. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, sabi ni Jesus, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Easy to read version. So I tell you to ask for what you want in prayer. And if you believe that you have received those things, they will be yours. Ang story na ating uh, Pagbibulay-bulayan is about the fig tree that withered. And the big question is, why? Why did the fig tree wither? This is how we will approach our study today. Alongside our study, we will mention some laws of quantum physics that seem to echo, parallel, or even explain scriptural teachings. It's a most interesting study excursion Kasi mula sa pag-aaral ng scripture ay bubuklatin natin ang ilang mga seemingly very, very relevant laws of quantum physics. But I will not try to explain or belabor the quantum physics principles. Babanggitin ko lang. Additional point of interest na lang ito sa mga familiar, mahilig, o interesado sa quantum physics or para sa mga seekers for more. Yung mga hindi interesado, Hindi familiar, hindi mahilig sa quantum physics. Well, the first question is, why not? It's a very interesting area of study. Won't you try? Let's just try. Or, kung talaga hindi kayo interesado, hayain na lang. Relax na lang habang may konting detour tayo sa quantum physics. At hintayin na lang nyo ang dagli ang pagbabalik sa scripture, sa comfort zone ng marami sa atin. But, Isaiah 54 verse 2 says, and let's apply this to the mind. Make your tent bigger. Open your doors wide. Don't think small. Make your tent large and strong. At yan ang ating uh, gustong i-stretch. I-stretch daw yung tent curtains wide. Eh. 
stretch din natin yung application ng meaning na ito na let's stretch our brain cells. Let's stretch our knowledge. At i-include natin sa usaping ito ang ilang principles ng quantum physics. And why should we like that? Because quantum physics is science. And science is about natural law. And natural law was created, of course, by God who created everything. So, friends, dapat ang science at ang paghahanap sa Panginoong Diyos. Friends, dapat ang tunay na spirituality, tunay na religiosity, seeking God at ang sciences. Now, ang ating kwento, Mark 11, 12 to 13. Si Jesus ay nakaramdam ng gutom. Nakita niya sa dikalayuan ang isang malagong puno ng igos. Nilapitan niya ito upang tingnan kung may bunga. Dahil hindi pa panahon ng igos noon, wala siyang nakita, kundi mga dahon lamang. Sa pagpapatuloy, Mark 11.14, kaya sinabi niya sa puno ng igos. So let's take note at this point, sinabihan ni Jesus ang puno. Let's have an excursion to some issues of science. Some researchers show that speaking nicely to plants support their growth whereas yelling at them won't. Rather than the meaning of words, however, this may have more to do with vibrations and volume. Plants have been shown to act favorably to low levels of vibrations, around 115 to 250 hertz being the ideal range. At marami na naging mga ganyang klase ring experimentations. Mga music na in doon yung plants. May mga plants na in sa non-stop rock na luoy. May mga plants na in sa magagandang classical music nag-blossom, nag-bloom. Maraming pag-aaral tungkol sa halaman. Kaya hindi katakataka na si Jesus kinausap yung halaman. Anong application natin yan agad-agad? Jesus talked to a tree. So tayo, why don't we talk to plants? Creation sila ng Diyos. May buhay. Let's care about plants. Ang pwede talaga ma-consider na the first commandment ay yung utos kay Adan, conserve and preserve nature. Now, balik sa kwento, Mark 11, 14. Dahil pinuntahan ni Jesus yung puno ng igos, the fig tree, hinanapan niya ng bunga, wala siyang nakitang bunga, sabi niya sa Mark 11, 14, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. Verse 14, in Tagalog, wala nang makakakain pa ng iyong bunga. Let's have an excursion to quantum physics. Observation, measurement, is also equivalent to expecting and predicting a particle's outcome and influencing it. At tulad ng sinabi ko, yung mga mahilig at nakakaunawa, namnamin nyo ang connection nitong issue ng quantum physics ato sa ating binabasa. Yung mga hindi mga mahilig at ayaw or walang alam, eh hayaan nyo na, palampasin nyo na, babalik din tayo sa scripture. Yun din naman yun. Nagahanap lang tayo ng parallels nitong mga principles sa ito sa quantum physics. Ano ang application? Agad-agad, receive blessing, not curse from heaven. Kasi yung fig tree received a curse. At mamaya pag-uusapan natin, pagtatangkaan natin, ipaliwanag o unawain kung bakit na curse yung tree. Align your life with Jesus' will. In other words, align your life with Jesusness. Yung fig tree was not aligned with the agenda of Jesus. Ayun tuloy ang kanyang sinapit. Know Jesus as He reveals Himself in the Gospels. Kasi marami tayong nalalaman tukol kay Jesus, pero kwentong kutsero, sabi-sabi da, kwento-kwento lang sa mga butik-butik at mga parlor-parlor, hindi pala yun ang sabi ng Gospels. Sabi lang pala ng mga religious leaders na hindi naman based sa Gospels, subject to the bias and interpretation of so many people na hindi naman pala sa Gospel na base Believe in Jesus, in His teachings and deeds. Receive Jesus' teaching and be a new person, a new creation as you become a new thinker, believer, 
doer. In other words, bigla tayo nakarating sa mahalagang lesson, diyan pa lamang sa takbo ng kwento natin, believe in Jesus, receive Jesus, be born again. And what does it mean to be born again? Is that to join any religious group? Is that to recite a memorized prayer? Be born again is to become a new person by thinking in a new way. In a new way about what? About God's love and grace in Jesus, about the law. Kasi sinabi ni Jesus kay Nicodemus, you must be born again. Nicodemus was an officer of the religious system in Israel. So he and many people like him had to be born again from the way of thinking of the Pharisees. He had to be born again from the religious style of the Pharisees. He had to have a new mindset, a new thinking, a new person, a new personality being born out of that. Yun ang born again. Na magkaroon ng bagong pananaw sa buhay, especially about the law. Bagong pananaw about religiosity and spirituality. Bagong pananaw kung ano ang talaga ang gusto ng Diyos na hindi naman laging yun ang itinuturo ng religion. So be born again. Sa Romans 12.2, Don't change yourselves to be like the people of this world. And may I add this parenthetic uh, stretching of what it could mean. Don't change yourself to be like the people of this world who are slaves to the law. But let God change you inside with a new way of thinking, being a believer in grace and love, being free from the law. Then you will be able to understand and accept what God wants for you. Meaning, God wants for you freedom, rest, peace, love, hindi judgment, hindi guilt, hindi fear. You will be able to know what is good and pleasing to Him and what is perfect. To be born again is to be reborn free from the law and to grow and live in freedom, peace, and rest. Meaning to be reborn free from the law and to grow and live in heaven on earth in the kingdom of God in you. To be born again is not to instantly or magically change to conform to the law as is commonly and mistakenly expected. This misunderstanding leads to terrible disappointments, frustrations, self-judgment, guilt, fear, and judgmentalism of others. Bakit nakarating sa pagiging born again itong kwento natin tungkol sa fig tree na naluoy? Maya-maya nga natin tatangkain unawain kung bakit naluoy. Pero sinasabi natin, naluoy siya initially dahil hindi siya naka-align sa agenda sa ninanais ni Jesus. At sa ating buhay, ano bang ninanais ni Jesus? Anong agenda niya? That we be born again. Yun ang sinabi niya kay Nicodemus who was a Pharisee, an officer of the religious system in Israel. So kung si Nicodemus at ang kanyang mga kawangis, kamuka, kabalat, ay kailangan ma-born again, ma-born again from what? From the law, from their legalism, from being slaves to the law that gives a lot of judgment and punishment, guilt and fear. And they should be born again into a new life of rest, of peace, of joy, which is Jesusness. Bakit natin ito inuungkat? Kasi yung misunderstanding na word na born again or the words na born again, akala nila, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation, ang ibig sabihin ay, Toing, magically, na iba ka na, dati kang may bisyo, biglang wala na. Kaya sabihin, bakit born again ka na, may bisyo ka pa? Dati kang may ginagawang ganito na hindi ayon sa law, tapos hindi mo pa rin matalikuran at ina-expect ng iba. Pag na born again ka, na iba ka na, na magic ka na, na biglang kayang-kaya mo nang sindin yung law. Sa kanila, to be a new creation is masunod mo lahat yung law. Samantalang, pag sinuri natin, to be a new creation is to be changed in thinking in mindset that you are no longer under the law, but you are under grace. Na naborn again ka into grace, into love, hindi into more obedience to the law. Anong naborn again doon? Dati ka nang nasa law. So pag naborn again ka, you get freed from the law and you now live in peace because God loves you. You now live with a restful lifestyle and thinking and habits Kasi yun ang nabago, yung ating attitude, yung ating pananaw, ating paniniwala tungkol sa law, tungkol sa love, tungkol sa grace. Na natatahimik ka, napapayapa ka, hindi dahil nasusunod mo ang lahat ng law kasi imposible naman. 
to obey all the law all the time. Kung di natatahimi ka dahil alam mong tinatanggap ka ng Panginoon, pinapatawad, minamahal, unconditionally. Therefore, you are restful and rested. Now, anong kinalaman niyan lahat sa ating pinag-aaralan? Kasi nga, tinutukoy natin na yung fig tree na luoy kasi hindi siya in accordance with the will of Jesus. Sa buhay din natin, pag ang pag-interpret natin yung to be born again, to be a new creation, is hindi accordance to the will of Jesus, which is to be born again because covered by love, covered by grace, not the more enslaved by the law, doon pa lang tayo magkakaroon talaga ng peace. Now, balik sa kwento. Mark 11, 20 to 21. Di ba, kiners ni Jesus yung uh, puno. At ngayon pa lang natin malalaman, actually, sa takbo ng kwento, kung ano nangyari. Kinaumagahan, pagdaan nila'y nakita nilang natuyo ang puno ng igos hanggang sa mga ugat nito. Naalala ni Pedro ang nangyari dito, kaya kanyang sinabi kay Jesus, Guru, tingnan nyo, patay na ang puno ng igos na isinumpan nyo. Our question is, why? As we have said later, we will offer a possible reason. But let's make an excursion to quantum physics and to a quantum physics law which is probability field. Impossible or seemingly impossible things can happen all the time because of probability as long as the probability is not zero. If it makes sense to you, thank God. If it doesn't, mag-aaral pang mabuti. At kung ayaw mag-aaral, ay hindi wag. Tuloy na lang tayo sa pagbabasa ng verses natin. Tulad nga ng sinabi ko, nung simula pa lang, mag excursion tayo into some principles of quantum physics and try to see alignments, parallelisms between this and what is happening in the story as Jesus teaches people. But immediately, meron na tayong application. Anong nangyari? Yung puno na luoy, sinabihan kasi ni Jesus. Sa atin, ang lesson is to believe. To believe that when you pray, it will happen. When you bless, nakaka-bless. At when you curse, nakaka-curse. Kaya dapat huwag kayo nagka-curse. Pray. Ano ang equivalent ng prayer sa quantum physics? Observe. Pray hard. Ano ang equivalent sa quantum physics ng pray hard? Tunnel. But bless. Do not curse. Dahil baka tumalbog sa'yo. Sa ibang instance, pag-aaralan natin ang pagtalbog ng prayer. Yung nagpe-pray ka na kasakit yung iba, mapahamak sila, mabigo sila, tapos tumatalbog, sinasagot, pero sa'yo bumabalik yung sagot at ikaw ang tumatanggap, kaya tumatalbog. But that's another issue. Let's do that another time. Mark 11, 22. Sumagot si Jesus, Manalig kayo sa Diyos. Sa quantum physics, observe, expect, or predict. Faith moves mountains. Yan ang sinabi ni Jesus. So ang lesson para sa atin na God, develop your faith. Ang tanong ng iba, at napaka-valid na tanong, na halos wala namang sagot na makita kahit sa nagahanap, how to develop faith? Wala namang manually, how to develop faith? Sa so nakita ko na, na napakarami na paraan ng pag-develop ng faith na hindi naman namamalaya ng mga taong may paraan pala, o kaya dahil hindi nila alam yung paraan, eh, hindi nila tuloy nagagawa, hindi na develop yung faith, how can you develop faith? I suggest, develop your thought life. Napaka-abstract kasi nung develop your faith. Hindi mo alam kung paano gagawin, saan magsisimula, saan pupunta, anong gagawin. So I say, and I suggest, develop your thought life. Think of what you want to believe in. Think of what you want. Lagi mong isipin. Sasabihin na iba, ang hirap pong manalig. Weak po ang faith ko. How to develop faith po? Kung hirap i-process, i-develop ang faith, daan niya na lang sa isip. Sa kaiisip. And let me simplify, always think of what you want. Bakit? Thought is faith. Thought is prayer. Pag iniisip mo, yun ang pinaliniwalaan mo. Pagka iniisip mo, prayer yun. 
Yun ang pinagpe-pray mo. Kaya pag lagi mong inisip na magkakasakit ka, ay eh, nakakasakit ka nga. Kasi yun ang pinaniniwalaan mo, yun ang pinopronounce mo, yun ang sinasabi mo, yun ang matutupad. Because God answers prayer. Ang hindi lang alam ng marami, ang thought pala nila, prayer. And because fear anticipates suffering or pain, Kaiisip mo, kaiisip mo, lagi kang natatakot. Yun ang nangyayari, yung kinakatakutan mo. Kasi your fear, your thoughts of fear, are prayers. Yun ang vibration mo, yung fear mo. So yun ang ina mo, yun ang babalik sa'yo, yun ang sagot sa prayer mo. Kaya kung ano ang ayaw mo mangyari, huwag mong isipin. Huwag mong sabihin. Huwag mong laging pagbulay-bulayan kasi yun ang prayer mo at yun ang mangyayari. Kung anong ibig mo, yun ang isipin mo. Halimbawa, meron ka mahal sa buhay, nagbabiyahe, isip pa ng isip na, ay, baka maaksidente, baka maaksidente. Negative yun eh. Yun ang prayer mo para mo nang sinabing maaksidente sana, maaksidente sana. Kasi aksidente ang laman ng utak mo. Ba't hindi mo isipin, safe siya, safe siya, safe siya. Para ang mangyari, ay eh, yung iniisip mo. Turn thought into faith. Turn thought into prayer. Thinking always equals praying always equals praying without ceasing. Think. Speak of what you want, not what you do not want. Speak of the positive, not the negative. Instead na sabihin mong halimbawang nawa o kang maaksidente, sabihin mo lang nawa, maging safe ka lagi. Think of what you want. Say what you want. Imbes sabihin mo na baka bumagsak ako sa exam, sabihin mo na wapo masa ako. Kasi nga yung sinasabi natin ay prayer. Now, fear is thought. Fear is faith in the bad, in the negative. So, fear is prayer in the negative. Kaya ang laging sinasabi ni Jesus, do not fear. Do not pray in the negative. Do not pray for what you fear. At sa quantum physics, do not observe, do not tunnel for what you do not like. Balik sa kwento, Mark 11.23. Tandaan ninyo ito. Kung kayo'y nananampalataya sa Diyos at hindi kayo nag-aalinlangan, maaari niyong sabihin sa bundok na ito, umalis ka riyan at tumalun ka sa dagat at ito nga ay mangyayari. Now, Quantum physics law, nothing is definite until observed. All things are just a wave of superposition potentials. The observer will collapse all these potentials into a single definite outcome. Kanya-kanyang observation yan, kanya-kanyang moving of mountains, kaya sa buhay, kanya-kanyang reality. Bakit? Meron pag umuulan na masaya, meron pag umuulan na malungkot, meron pag umuulan na wala lang, walang feelings. Kasi ibang-iba, iba-iba ang observation nila, iba-iba ang pananaw nila, iba-iba ang pananalig nila tungkol sa ulan. Meron nananalig na ang ulan ay blessing, wow, ang ganda. Meron namang nananalig na ay, hindi yan blessing kasi wala akong space at wala akong time na magtinda sa kalye kasi umuulan. So sa kanya, yung ulan ay hindi blessing, edi hindi siya masaya. Yun ang reality niya. Take note, maraming humipo kay Jesus, pero yun lang babaeng dinudugo na may pananalig, may prayer, or sa quantum physics, may observation, may tunneling for healing, siya lang ang gumaling. In fact, clueless ang lahat sa nagaganap. So, kanya-kanyang reality. Doon sa babae, may reality ang nagaganap, gumagaling siya. Yung iba, clueless, wala silang alam. Yun ang reality nila. Kasi iba-iba ang kanilang observation. Iba-iba ang tunneling. Iba-iba ang pananalig. Iba-iba ang prayer. Sa quantum physics, tunneling, if the probability is non-zero, this probability will always happen. If there is a possibility, no matter how small, it will still manifest. Ano ang application niyan sa buhay natin? Think equals pray. Sa quantum physics, observe. Think always and think hard. Pray always. Sa quantum physics, tunnel. Therefore, Philippians 4.8, 
Keep your minds on whatever is true, pure, right, holy, friendly, and proper. Don't ever stop thinking about what is truly worthwhile and worthy of praise. Sa quantum physics, observe and tunnel on what is desirable. Sa pagpapatuloy ng kwento, Mark 11.24, sabi ni Jesus, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Kaya sinasabi ko sa inyo, ano man ang hingin nyo sa inyong panalangin, maniwala kayong natanggap na ninyo yon at matatanggap nga ninyo yon Sa quantum physics, expect, predict results. At sa ating buhay spiritual, ask. Ask by asking. Ask by thinking. Iniisip mo pa lang, hinihingi mo na. Kaya dapat bantayan natin kung anong iniisip natin kasi yung iniisip natin, prayer. Believe you have already received it. Imagine na sinasabi ni Jesus, pag nag-ask ka, believe mo na past tense, natanggap mo na. Believe by expecting, by claiming the sure answer. At saka pa lang, it will be yours. Tingnan nyo yung mga time frame. Pray, but believe that you have already finished na receive what you prayed for. At kung naniwala ka na na natanggap mo na, dun palang mangyayari, it will be yours. Matthew 7, 7, Continue to ask, and God will give it to you. Continue to search, and you will find. Continue to knock, and the door will open for you. Sa quantum physics, believing it already happened, Bakit ganun? Yung sa faith, believe that it already happened. Yung ipinanalangin mo ay nangyari na. Sa quantum physics, the observer can influence the outcome of a system by extracting data or information that relates to their expected outcome. If you want to increase the possibility of an outcome, extract data that relates to that outcome. Gusto kong ulitin, if all of these quantum physics issues don't mean anything to you, Hayaan nyo lang. Padulasin nyo na lang at palampasin. Pero sa mga nakakaunawa, o may pagkaunawa kahit konti, appreciate natin yung itinuturo sa scripture through the lenses of quantum physics. Nadadagdaga ng appreciation natin sa mga katotohanan, hindi nababawasan. Lalong lumalakas ang ating pananalig, hindi humihina, at lalong gumaganda ang pagbabasa ng scripture, hindi pumapangit. Ngayon, why was the fig tree cursed? For fruitlessness? Yan ang tanong natin una, di ba? Side question lang ito. Why did the fig tree wither? Remember the temple incident. Nung dumaan si Jesus sa fig tree na yon, hinanapan niya ng leaves, pero wala. Sabi niya, nawa, wala nang makapitas pa ng anything sa'yo. Parang sinumpanan niya yung tree na hindi na siya mag-function as a tree. Tapos tumuloy siya sa Jerusalem. Anong ginawa niya doon? Ang daming inaasahan ng mga tao na kung anong gagawin niya yung mga dakilang mga bagay. Pero pinagtataboy niya yung mga nagtitinda at nagtitrade at nandadaya doon sa temple. Pinaalis niya yung mga hayop doon na isina sacrifice In other words, anong ginawa niya? Para na niya sinabi doon sa temple, isasara ka na. Hindi ka na dapat pamugara ng ganito mabaganakaw. Hindi niya na dapat pagnegosyohan ng pagbebenta ng mga pagpapatawad sa kasalanan. At pinagtataob niya yung mga mesa ng mga, mga money changers na, pinagbibi, na bumibili ka doon ng mga hayop para i-offer. So, yun ang ginawa ni Jesus. At kinabukasan, naluoy nga yung fig tree. The fig tree, could the fig tree be a metaphor for the fruitless temple? Could the fig tree and the incident be a foreboding of what would happen? Na, yung fig tree, huwag natin personalin, although personally, yung fig tree na yun, naluoy, pero naging talinghaga siya na mangyayari sa temple, maluluoy. Kasi, hinahanapan mo ng bunga, wala naman. para hinahanapan mo yung katuroan ng temple ng peace, ng love, wala naman. Hinahanapan mo yung temple ng rest, wala naman. Hinahanapan mo yung temple ng kasiyahan ng mga tao, wala naman. So, parang fig tree na wala namang bunga, walang saysay. Sabi ni Jesus sa fig tree, you will wither. Wala nang puputa pa sa'yo para mamilas kasi wala namang mapipita sa'yo. 
at gandun ang ginawa niya sa temple, pinagtatabol niya yung mga nagtitinda, pinalayas niya yung mga hayop, ipinagtataob niya ang mga mesa. Yun ang ginawa niya sa fig tree, yung ginawa niya sa temple. So yung fig tree para siyang symbol of the temple. At ano nga talaga ang nangyari? Kasi sa Matthew 24, 1-2, Jesus left the temple area and was walking away. But his followers came to him to show him the temple's buildings. He asked them, Are you looking at these buildings? The fact is, they will be destroyed. Every stone will be thrown down to the ground. Not one stone will be left on another. And alam natin ang history, the temple was totally destroyed in AD 70. So, yung sinabi ni Jesus doon sa fig tree na walang bunga, na maluluoy ka na, yun ang nangyari sa temple na walang bunga, na luoy na talaga. Parallelism, symbolism. Walang personalan sa fig tree. Naging metaphor, talinghaga lang siya. Sa pagtutuloy ng ating kwento, Mark 11.14, at sabi ni Jesus, And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, dyan siya nag-end eh, Forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Anong lesson? Non-forgiveness of others negates faith and prayer. In other words, kung i-stretch natin sa quantum physics, non-forgiveness negates observation. Yung quantum physics na yan, may mga principles like distraction. Pagka-unforgiving ka, nagagalit ka, namumuhi ka sa isang tao, distracted ka, distracted ang faith mo, naaabala ang iyong pananalig, naaabala ang prayer mo, nawawalang bisa ang iyong dasal. Dapat nakafocus ka sa inoobserve mo. Pag may ibang iniisip, lumalakas yung tinatawag sa quantum physics na interference. Magiging blurred yung potential ng particle to be definite o mangyari kung ano ang gusto mong mangyari sa kanya. Hindi mangyayari yun kasi divided lang yung attention at ang unforgiveness, anger, hatred, pang-divide yan ng yung observation. Pang-divide yan ng yung prayer. Pang-divide yan ng power of your prayer. The observer effect is dependent on the amount of observation. When the observer's capacity increases, when the level of observation goes up, pag nakaka-concentrate, the interference weakens. In contrast, when it is reduced and the observation slackens, the interference increases. Interference is like the blurring of a particle. Higher interference equals higher blur. Particle state is not definite, kaya pwede siyang iba-ibahin by faith or by observation, by prayer or by tunneling, thus by controlling the properties of the quantum observer. Scientists manage to control the extent of its influence on the electron's behavior. Hmm, sasabihin na ng iba, nosebleed. Eh, may pagka-nosebleed nga ng konti. Pero pag pinag-aralan natin yan, nakaka-appreciate na na-apply mo yung principles of quantum physics sa mga sinasabi ni Jesus. Dahil sumusunod yung word ng quantum physics sa word who was there in the beginning, who is Jesus. Pag pinasimplify lang natin, ibig natin sabihin, Sabi ni Jesus, kung mananalangin ka, mag-forgive ka muna. Bakit? Kasi pagka hindi ka nagpo-forgive, naaabala, humihina ang power of your prayer. At ano ang equivalent niya sa quantum physics? May distraction. Merong interference. Pagka meron kang hatred, meron kang anger, meron kang ibang laman ng isip, hindi ka peaceful, hindi ka rested, may interference. So humihina ang power ng iyong prayer. Kaya sabi niya, nagpe-pray ka, mag-forgive ka muna. Humihingi ka ng forgiveness, Ama, mag-forgive ka muna. Kasi habang hindi ka nag-forgive, may abala yung ipinagpe-pray mo, hindi matutupad. Lahat sa quantum ay probability. Yung observer ay pwede mag-manipulate kung anong probability ang i-increase niya. At sabi sa Luke 17.5, The apostle said to the Lord, Give us more faith. Ang gandang panalangin, give us more faith. Kasi alam nila, Parang ang hirap yata gumawa ng faith, ang hirap umimbento, mag-manufacture, mag-multiply ng faith. Pero tulad nga ng sinabi natin kanina, hindi mo maintindihan how you will increase your faith. Just think. Think more. 
Think more and more of what you really want. At hindi mo alam na de-develop pala yung faith mo tungkol doon at nagiging prayer na pala yung thinking mo kaya natutupad na yung mga hinihingi mo at hinihiling dahil iniisip mo. Kung saan-saan nakarating ang ating usapan, actually tatlong major topics to, yung kwento, yung turo ni Jesus na pag nanalangin ka, pag nanalig ka, matutupad yon tapos sa pag-usapan din natin as an aside yung temple at yung fig tree na yung fig tree ay maaring symbol ng temple na magwawakas na ang kanyang pag-exist kasi hindi naman siya fruitful according to the expectations of Jesus kaya ganoon ang nangyari sa fig tree tapos ang excursion pa tayo sa counting mga principles of quantum physics hindi naman natin talaga alam yung mga quantum physics na yan nakakaim ba yan pero ang point Sikapin natin intindihin kasi mas nakakadagdag ng liwanag sa pag-aaral natin ng scripture. Mas nakakadagdag ng appreciation. When you look at many teachings in scripture, lalo teachings ni Jesus, and the deeds of Jesus, when you understand it from the lenses of quantum physics, mas lalo mang nasasabing, yes, the sciences are God's prophets. Yes, God designed all the scientific laws kasi God designed all the natural laws. Therefore, Science could be God's prophet. Tagaturo, tagapagpaliwanag. Huwag tayong matakot sa knowledge. We must grow in knowledge because we must keep on changing our mind from glory to glory. God bless us all. Makapangyarihang Ama sa Langit, kayo ay aming pinapuri at pinasasalamatan sa mensaheng aming narinig. Panginoon, Lubos ang aming pasasalamat sa iyong pagpapatawad, pagtanggap at pagmamahal ng walang kondisyon. Turuan niyo po ang ihanay ang aming buhay sa inyong kalooban. Teach us how to have more faith, to believe and to grow in knowledge of your love and grace. Direct and renew our minds through prayer. At nawa ang inyong kapayapaan ang maghari sa aming mga puso. Bilang pasasalamat, Tanggapin niyo po ang aming mga handog at ikapu na sa si inyo rin nagmula. Sa pangalan ng aming Panginoong Yesus. Panginoong Hesus, kami po ay patuloy na sumasamba at nagpapasalamat sa inyong kabaitan at kabutihan sa amin. Salamat sa inyong mga salita 
na muli kami po ay inyong binasog at pinaalalahanan tungo sa tamang pamumuhay bilang mga anak niyo. Salamat sa mga taong nakinig, nanood at naniniwala kami na na dinig nyo rin po at tinanggap nyo ang aming mga pagpupuri at pananalangin. Sa aming paghihiwalay, mai sa katuparan at maipamuhay nawa namin ang aming mga natutunan ngayon. Naway patuloy nyo kaming matagpuan na matuwid at tapat sa inyo at naway maluwalhati kayo sa amin Panginoon at ang kalooban ninyo ang aming maging naising sa aming mga buhay. At ngayon, sumaatinawa ang mayamang pagpapala ng ating Diyos ang sa langit, ang pag-ibig at pakikipag-ulayaw ng ating tagapagligtas na Panginoong Heso Kristo, at ang presensya at pakikipisa ng Banal na Espiritu Santo mula ngayon hanggang magpakailanman. Divided